good morning. You're good? Okay. Good morning. It's good to see each one out. For our visitors that we do have, we're very thankful for your presence, and we hope and anticipate that you certainly feel like the honored guest that you are. And certainly, if you've got any questions about anything that we do today, uh, please ask any of the men or certainly our elders that uh, if you've got any questions, it would be our privilege to go to the Bible and, and show you why we do what we do during our worship today. Before we begin, I do have just a few announcements. Um, we do have several baptisms. Uh, please reference your bulletin that we had, uh, I believe, eight from last week from the jail ministry, and I believe we've got at least six today. So I know those that are um, involved in that work would implore that you continue to pray, uh, continue to be involved. I know there's a lot of ladies that send cards there. Everything that gets done around that ministry is valuable. Uh, it's, 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 it's seen and felt and noticed by the inmates, and they do really, really appreciate it. It's, it's changing their lives, quite literally. Um, and since we've been doing that now for I don't know how many months, uh, when you walk in the jail, you can feel the difference. It's not the same place as it was six months ago. Keep on your uh, three weeks away. Keep on your itinerary that... Uh, We'll have Friends and Family Day. Uh, pick up one of the uh, handouts back there for guests and visitors, friends and family that you might list and think about, pray about. Uh, again, in the last year, if you look at the prayers that our Heavenly Father's answered on behalf of this congregation, you can't deny that their prayers don't have a tremendous effect. And so when you pray for these people that uh, you want to invite and hopefully will uh, be able to bring, pray for that. It'll happen. In terms of the directory, there's a sign-up list back there. If you haven't been able to sign up, please do. Um, it's, it was mentioned uh, for the elders and deacons, please get an individual photo also when taking these pictures. Uh, if you've already done that, sign up just for an individual photo uh, for that as well. Nacho and Paul will be planning to take a mission trip to Columbia July 4th through the 18th, so keep that on your prayer list. Uh, Bibles and songbooks are wanted. Um, there are some missions that are in need of Bibles and songbooks, so if you've got any at home from that might have been on a uh, book stand at some point that you're not using, please bring them in. Um, they will use them uh, in Kenya and I believe Columbia. Men's training class will start uh, June the 4th next month, uh, second Sunday evening, 4 to 5.30. Uh, training will be in terms of leadership capacity and service, so uh, men, uh, please make a second Sunday evening available for that. April uh, 12th, uh, Tuesday morning, men uh, breakfast, Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock. Ladies retreat, 22nd and 23rd of the month at Jan Sanders. Uh, Tim's buying ice cream for everybody Sunday night on April 24th. Is that right? Okay. I just wanted to be sure. I always tease him about it. Told him if I don't tease him, nobody will. So, 12 and younger. Okay. I'll try to fit into 12 and younger. He still hasn't said if it's mental or chronological or what. So, I still may qualify. So, In terms of those that are ill, uh, I saw Marvin, but I didn't see Joanne, so she still coming along, still mending. Uh, Marvin Clark, keep him in your prayers. Poor fellow's going through a lot with pain. Pat Cruz is going to have surgery the 14th, so keep that on your prayer list. Susie Doty continues to pray for getting better in strength. Uh, Haley's was back with us Wednesday night, maybe just having a bad day today. I didn't see him. Yeah, so he's got a rough day today. Um, Jerry's going to be having surgery soon, so I've been waiting for that for about three months now. So hopefully that gets put on there uh, pretty soon, and Bobby's with us today, so I saw Bobby. Um, so keep them in your prayers. Um, 
we're going to change things just a little bit from the standpoint the elder one of the elders will have a closing prayer to bring everything to a close and remind us about those I do have a thank you card from the Andrew Barnwell family uh, they mentioned that they're deeply appreciative of their our kind expression and sympathy thank you for all your love and prayers the Barnwell family and Totten family Marvin uh, and Joanne has a card here. We would appreciate prayers for our nephew, Rick, Rick Sedlicek. He has bladder and kidney cancer and will have surgery sometime this month. So keep Rick Sedlicek on your prayer list. Um, Carlene gave me this Wednesday night. Pauline Buttram's sisters in Cox Hospital. I anticipate she's probably been moved out since Wednesday. So she moved to uh, Hartville Care Center Thursday, so that was a couple of days ago. She had a, a feeding tube put in, and she's uh, quite old and not doing very well, so keep Pauline Buttram's sister in your prayers. And that's all I've got. Certainly, if there's anything else, please get them to me. And uh, actually, I've got one more here. Here's a card from Joanne and Mar uh, Marvin as well. Dear church family, it's such a blessing and so wonderful to be part of this family. We feel surrounded and strengthened by your love and caring and continual prayers. Thank you so much for the cards, calls, food, and money tree, and it all means so much to us. God bless you all. Love, Joanne and Marvin. Like I said, if I've missed anything, let me know, or if there's anything new that needs to be added, please get them to me, and we'll get them announced. Before we enter our worship, let's do have a word of prayer, please. Our Father in heaven, we're indeed so thankful for the beauty of this day, and certainly it is a, a beautiful spring day. The change of seasons, Father, it's, it's so wonderful to see the warm temperatures, but Father, the beauty of this day is that it's the first day of the week, and we have the opportunity to come before you and worship and offer you the worship that you're so worthy and you are so due. We pray, Father, as we approach you this worship hour, that we do so with hearts that are well prepared, that, Father, our hearts are open to you, that, Father, we bring you the worship and adoration and love in spirit and in truth, just as you've given us to do, and that you'd be glorified by everything this morning. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. All right, let's begin our song service today with number 570. 570 would be a beautiful life. It's uh, verses 1, 2, and 4. Each day I'll do, day I'll do a golden deed, deed by helping those. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do the best I can. Life's evening sun is sinking low, a few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be setting sun to be a child of God each day my light must shine along the way I'll sing his praise while ages roll and strive to help some troubled soul life's evening sun is sinking low, a few more 
Next one will be uh, number 38. And we will sing this one through twice. before the opening prayer today will be number 539. All right, would be uh, verses number 1, 2, and 4. <coughs> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, so praying as I onward down, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground, Lord, lift me up and let me stand, my faith on bow with me, please. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day that you've given us, Father, that we can come together here and study another portion of your word and sing songs to you, Father, that only you're worthy of. And we pray, Father, at this time that 
you would be with all our number, Father, that are sick. Pray that you would be with the doctors and give them the knowledge, Father, to help them to get better, that they can come back at the next appointed time, Father. And we thank you for the blessings, Father, that we have, that we have many that have been sick, Father, going through surgeries, They're getting better, Father. We thank you for that and the blessings of that, Father. And pray, Father, that you would be with Brother Rick this morning and give him an easy recollection of his lessons, Father, and be with us as listeners that we can take your word, Father, throughout all the world, Father. And pray, Father, that you would go with us through the rest of this service, Father, and give us the many blessings, Father, that we want, Father. <clears throat> we know, Father, that we are only human, and we sin, Father, and we pray that you would forgive us of those sins, Father, as we ask that forgiveness, and we continue to be your children. And this we pray in your Son's most holy name. Amen. Uh, the song to prepare our for the Lord's Supper today will be uh, number 364. And we will sing uh, all three verses of the song. <coughs> We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the No. We are coming to a time when the world remembers the death and resurrection of Christ. But as Christians, we are commanded to do this on the first day of the week. So let us prepare our minds and look back to the suffering that our Lord and Savior went through so that we can partake of this bread that represents his body in a way that is pleasing to him. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that your Son 
was willing to die upon the cross, that he gave his life that we could have forgiveness of our sins. We ask thee now that we partake of this bread in remembrance of his body that was shed and tortured upon that cross. We ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now at this time we'll take of the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus that was shed upon the cross and the new covenant that was instituted. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for allowing thy son to come down and die on the cross. We know only his blood can wash away our sin. If we take this fruit of the vine that represents his blood that was shed and the new covenant that you instituted, dear Heavenly Father, let us reflect upon our lives and make sure we're leading the best we can, dear Heavenly Father. And let us take this in a way to be pleasing in thy sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Apart from the, the Lord's Supper, we have the command in Scripture that we are to return on the first day of the week a portion of that which God has blessed us with. Scripture teaches us that not only is this a blessing that we receive, but it is also one of the ways that we can show the love that we have for uh, the Lord. So if you think about this, we'd ask if you would Please bow and let's ask God's blessing upon this offering. Father, we're thankful to you for the opportunity that you've given us to return to you a portion of that which you have so richly blessed us with. We pray, Father, that you'll help us as we return, return to you that we'll not think about those blessings, Father, that uh, you share with us each and every day and help us to realize father that it was through the gospel that we became your children and in order for that to be possible the gospel had to be preached and it had to be funded and we pray father you'll bless us as we return now that this might not only be a uh, a token of our love for you and for your word and what you've done for us but it might be used in a way, Father, that the gospel will be further spread, that the kingdom, Father, will, will increase. We humbly ask this through Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
song before the lesson this morning will be number 610. I love my Savior too. will be the uh, first and the third verses. <clears throat> Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praises to Him I sing, onward I go. Closely to Him I cling, blessing still flow. Song of encouragement will be number 902. Good morning. I'm going to try my best to uh, pronounce this. Ecclesiastes. Might have almost done that. <clears throat> we'll be reading from chapter 9, verse 3. 3 through 10 in the New King James Version. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that one thing happens to all. Truly the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live. And after they go to the dead... But for him who is joined to all of the living, there is hope. There is a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead knowing nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy has now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. Go, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already accepted your works. Let your garments always be white, and let your head lack no oil. Live joyfully, with a wife whom you love all the days of your vain life, which he has given you under the sun, all your days of vanity, for that is your portion in life, and in the labor which you perform under the sun. Whatever you hand find, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. And there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Thank you so much, Luther, for the scripture reading. There's a couple words in there that we're going to be looking at as we study this lesson this morning. And one of those is the word share. Not going to talk about specifically, but you're going to see that we're going to be talking about people who come together to share in a labor under the sun. 
Okay, it was wonderful you sharing with us this morning, leading scene. So good to see you doing that. Appreciate that so much. And and being, that was the first time that you've done it. Yes. yes, and it's always scary, isn't it? A little bit, but you did well. We appreciate it so much. And it's so wonderful to see this young man doing it. And we appreciate it. Okay, just want you to know that and look forward to you seeing singing before us a lot, leading us in singing. It's so good when we see these young people going to work for the congregation as members of the body here, and it's, it's encouraging to us that have got gray hair for some reason. I think my gray hair is all Thad's fault. Not really, Thad. I, I blame it on my two kids, but I believe it's the process of aging because of what Eve did in the garden, so we can always blame it on the woman, right? But it was the man also who participated, so I'll, I'll get that back to me. So I better be quiet in that respect. What you're looking at on the screen is an old-fashioned barn moving. Now, how many of y'all been to an old-fashioned barn moving? Boy, we're not, not a barn moving crowd, are we? Interestingly enough, in July of 1988, folks got together to move a barn. And you might be wondering, why would folks get together to move a barn? Well, it was in Bruno... Nebraska, a farmer by the name of Herman Ostry and his family had a barn that needed moved out of the way of coming floodwaters. The waters were rising and uh, they knew that over time the potential for losing the barn was great. And so the timing was interesting but also the fact that they had a problem in moving the barn because to have it move by a mover was going to be extremely difficult and expensive in finding someone even to do it, to tackle such a thing. But Herman got to figuring out that the barn weighed about 6,540 pounds. And he figured that if he could enlist enough friends, family, and neighbors to come together in this one place for a purpose, he could get them to help him move this barn to a higher location and remove the threat of the potential floodwaters. And he calculated that he would need approximately 350 people to make this happen. And if he could get 350 of his friends, his neighbors, and family together and get them involved that they could literally pick up that barn and move it because that would only mean that they would be carrying 55 pounds. And so sharing in this work together, they could get that barn moved where it needed to go. And that was even uphill. Well, can you imagine such a task recruiting that many people to move a barn? Because a lot of those folks are just like us. They've never been involved in an old-fashioned barn moving before. But Herman was not going to let this deter his purpose of getting this barn moved. And so he began slowly talking to his family, talking to his friends and his neighbors. Well, what is interesting about this story is that as he started recruiting these volunteers, the, the project began to take on a life all its own. To the point the town of Bruno said, hey, look, let's incorporate this. The timing's going to work out great. Let's incorporate this barn moving in with our 4th of July and have it as a part of our centennial celebration. Now, how many of you, for a centennial celebration on July 4th, seen folks move a barn? Now, I felt like I was moving the barn last 4th of July that we had the parade because I was chasing the wagon the whole way. But can you imagine spending the 4th of July moving a barn? Well, here's what's interesting. Because of publicity and the fact the town incorporated this into their centennial celebration, over 4,000 spectators came together for this event. And folks, Herman got his barn moved because people were willing to share in a labor to make something happen that a lot of folks said would be impossible. But they, out of 
The desire to do went all out. Going all out for something is extremely valuable in a person's life. As you look at uh, Ecclesiastes and what Solomon writes, it's almost depressing to think about. He's talking about vanity and life being va in vanity and, and the struggle and so forth. But, but there's little clues in the passage that tells us he's trying to tell us something that is very important. For example, look at verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. And that word might is a word which means one's ability, power, and strength that rests within your hands. Now think about our hands. I think I could have been a part of that barn movement because I can lift pretty well 55 pounds, not too much of a problem. And you might be thinking, well, you're carrying about 200 and something, you ought to be okay with 55. But yeah, 55 pounds, I can do that. So I could have been a part of that barn moving. But you know, I couldn't have done it by myself. What did it take? It took a group of people coming together with their might and working in the sharing of moving that barn. Cliss asks these 9, 10 in the CV version. It says, work hard at whatever you do. The ISV says, whatever the activity in which you engage, do it with all your ability. That gives us the idea of the concept of the verse, that, that when we have something before us to do and it needs to be done and we decide we're going to do it, then we want to put ourselves into it. We want to go all out because going all out is doing. You know, 4,000 people showed up, but only 300 and something participated. A lot of folks are just spectators. They want to watch others using their hands. But spectators don't get the barn move, do they? It's the ones who are willing to use their skills, use their ability, put their heart into it, and participate. It's interesting in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15, that in the New King James, we have the words, be diligent. King James says, study to present yourself approved to God. Give all diligence. Be diligent is the meaning of the word. To present yourself approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And of course, we know that's essential, to divide that word of truth, and, and we must be diligent in it because it's about excellence. You often hear companies, when you hear presentation by the, the management or those hired to do presentations to encourage the company, they'll talk about the importance of doing your best for excellence. As you look at scripture, you read about excellence and doing your best. God wants us to do our best, to reach a point that... His work is accomplished through our hands, using our abilities. The ESV translates that passage of Scripture, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Do your best. Tragically, you and I have experienced relationships with those who do not do their best. Maybe you've hired someone to do some work, or maybe you've went in and worked with a company and I don't want to point any fingers to anybody, but there's a lot of folks in this world who do not care to do their best. They do not have any desire to be striving for excellence and putting them, themselves into the work. They just want to be spectators and let somebody else do the barn moving. But folks, spectators don't accomplish that's why in Colossians 3 and verse 23, Paul wrote to the brethren there and he says, and whatever you do, and he's talking to Christians, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and, and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. And as you read that context, you see he's talking to slaves, servants. But those words extend beyond just someone working for an earthly master. We're working for the Lord. He is our master. And he wants us to pour ourselves into it so that we do our best. So that we give ourselves, not as a spectator, but as a participant in 
carrying the load that our hands allow us to do. And look at verse 24, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. Doing our best has its privileges. And the question goes back to this, does God want us to do our best? Does he want us to give us, to give him our all? Does he want us to go all out in what we do in his service? And I've got folks out there, you're, you're, you're doing this. Because you know that's the right thing, right? It's do your best. In John 4, Jesus speaks the words to his disciples. He says, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? To translate that into our vernacular or hillbilly, you know, that's talking about putting off what you can do today till tomorrow. Anybody here do that besides me? If you open my garage, you'll see all those things that I've put off till tomorrow. It's real easy to do that when it comes to the Lord's work. Yeah, I know this needs to be done, but you know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll have more time. and It'll be easier tomorrow, and the sun will probably be shining tomorrow, or if it's raining, I'll just put it off till another day. Oh, by the way, it's really not ready time to do it. You know, there's certain times of year you do things, certain times of year you don't do things, right? That's like a harvest. Oh, that's what we read. There are four, still four months and then comes the harvest. Look what Jesus says. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at all the, what? He says, look at the fields. For they are already white for harvest. Look out. All out. Opportunity is there today. And what does God want us to do? He wants us to give it our all. Go all out. Because there is a harvest. Luke 10 verse 2. Jesus said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the, his harvest. Send out. Go all out. Because there is a need for a harvest. If you happen to have had looked at the sheet that, and picked it up, and I hope everybody did. If you did not, it's back there on the table. You can't miss it. Go ahead and pick it up. It doesn't have a hole in it like I tore into this one. Pick this sheet up. Because it's talking about going all out. You see, God needs hands to work for him. Folks who commit themselves to doing the best, not just being spectators and saying, well, someone else can, can carry the bar and I'll just watch. No, he needs us to go all out. He needs us as his children to participate in reaping that harvest. But unfortunately, there is a challenge with labor. Because when you look at the question, what happens if we fail to go all out? Y'all see this guy right here? He's enjoying himself, isn't he? I did this once out in the woods and ended up laying in a bunch of poison ivy. As you examine this picture, I'm not sure what country it was taken in. I, I use pictures like this because they're, they're, they're not copyrighted. And it's an interesting picture because he's laying there. He's quite comfortable. His clothes are pretty unkempt. Looks like he's probably slept in them over and over and over again. And on his feet, if you notice real carefully here, he's got, uh, looks like straw and stuff stuffed in cloths wrapped around his feet. Now you have to wonder, is he just... A victim of circumstances or could it be there's another reason that he is the way he is Solomon in all of his wisdom which wrote Ecclesiastes said in Proverbs verse 4 the soul of a lazy man desires but notice the result and has nothing I don't know this man personally so I can't tell you if he's lazy or not but there's some evidence it may be possible 
And what's the problem with a man who is lazy? Well, he doesn't take and put his hands to the work, does he? He just soon somebody else does so. And the writer goes on in verse 4 in contrast, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. In Proverbs 10, verse 4, we read, Poor is the one who works with a lazy hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich, or he's prosperous. Obviously, this guy is uh, taking a rest. Nothing wrong with the rest unless he's lazy and unwilling to put his hands to the task. He doesn't do with his hands what he could do with all his might. He doesn't put himself into it. And what is the result? Ultimately, the harvest doesn't get reaped if you're looking at it from the prospect of a field. What if they, they had, the day they moved the barn in, in July and in, in the whole scene of everybody coming out, what if everybody had been spectators? Would the barn have gotten moved? Wouldn't have happened. It took people willing to put their hands to the labor. And when you think about that harvest, if the harvest doesn't happen, it's wasted. And I want you to read with me Proverbs 10, verse 26. You probably jumped on that already. But look at this. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy man to those who send them. Now, how joyful is vinegar and smoke in the eyes? Well, we know the answer to that. Unfortunately, when folks don't reap the harvest, the harvest can go to waste. But let's look at the other side of that. What happens if we succeed in going all out? What happens if, if we decide we're not going to be a spectator, we're going to be a participator, and we're going to give it our all just like eating taters? What's going to happen? The labor, as the writer says in verse 16 of Proverbs 10, the labor of the righteous leads to life. The wages of the wicked to sin. So what we do has... A conclusion. And here in the case, the labor of the righteous leads to life. In other words, when you consider the need for the harvest, what's going to happen if people put their hands to the work? They're going to reap the success of the harvest. Look at this guy's face right here. Why is he so happy? What's he holding in his hand? The result of his labor. The fruit of of his labor and that speaks volumes if you think about a picture being worth a thousand words in Colossians 3 verse 23 we read the words once again whatever you do do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men probably most of you could quote that verse what does that word heartily mean it means we're going to do it with our strength we're going to pour our hearts into it our, our very inner being is the idea of the word there and what's going to be the result? Verse 24, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. God has the crown of victory laid up for those who put their hands to the work of the Lord. For those who are willing to be faithful, live obedient to the truth, we have the promise that there will be the reward of inheritance. And that's motivating, but I want you to think with me on a practical level. What motivates us to put our hands to work, to, to go all out? When I was reading the story about the barn, I wondered, what, what was it that, that caused folks to say, okay, I'm in, I'll carry my 55 pounds. What made the difference in those people? What motivated them? And I asked the question, well, was it being friends to the farmer? Was it because of his being able to see his need and knowing that if it was going to get done, he's going to have to have folks that jump in and make it happen? And then I started thinking about this. Jesus said in Mark 12, verse 30, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, 
and with all your strength. That's that, that heartedly part, isn't it? We give our very inner being to, to God, and we love Him. And of course, Jesus says, this is the first commandment. But then it goes on, knowing that the love of God is above all things, it goes on to others. Jesus says in verse 31, and the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well, who is our neighbor? I'm going to tie something together here. Who's our neighbor? Is it somebody that's lost? Is it someone that would qualify as a field who needs to be harvested? What did Jesus do when he sent his disciples out? He, went, he sent them out to reap the harvest. And of course, what's the result of sowing seed? It's reaping. Who's out there that needs to be reaped? Our friends, our family, and our neighbors. Because they're lost. They're going to be fit for being cast out and burned for an eternity if we don't put our hands to the work. Heartily, mightily. And if we love our neighbors, what are we going to do? We're going to do what we can to reap that harvest. In John 4, verse 35, there's where Jesus says there's still four months, and then comes the harvest. Some, so he says, do not say that. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And then he goes on, verse 36, and he who reaps receive wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he and he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. I am so thankful this last couple of years we've been able to rejoice a lot as the harvest has been reaped. The seed sown, seed watered, and God gives the increase. What a joy. And that's what it says. Rejoice together. It's a beautiful thing when folks change their lives and surrender to the Lord and give their lives over to serving Christ, looking forward themselves to being a part of heaven for an eternity. Look at Proverbs 11, verse 30 real quick. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And then he goes on, and he who wins souls is wise. Why is one wise who wins souls for the Lord? What are we talking about? It's those who pitch in, those who want to reap the harvest, those who want to reach out to their friends and their neighbors who are lost. Why is there such a joy? Look at James. He answers that question in James 5 and verse 20. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death. And it doesn't stop there and cover a multitude of sins. And when you study that word death, it's not just dying like Rover, dead all over. It's talking about an eternal death, eternal punishment. What a joy when someone surrenders their life to God. And what great motivation that is to take our hands and say, okay, I'm going to raise my part, going all out to lift this barn. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Paul gives us this assurance. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What a wonderful passage of Scripture that tells us when we work with our hands, giving ourselves mightily to the Lord, putting our whole heart in there, that He is going to bless us. Our labors, even though we might grow tired, you put this, look at this poor guy right here, you can tell he's been working and he's tired. Probably been out there in the heat, struggling to see some other folks back there working, but it's okay because he knows that his labor is not in vain. We know in our service to the Lord, when we've done our best, it's not in vain. Which brings me to the conclusion this morning. I want to tell you the rest of the story about the barn. That day, 
344 people committed to working together. He didn't reach the 350, but he had enough. And the reason he had enough was because those 344 people were committed to do the job. And to think about this, started with one family who invited others, their neighbors, their friends, and their family. And that grew to where he had 4,000 spectators, but more importantly, he had 344 committed people to put their hands to the labor. And we know the rest of the story from the fact that he did move the barn. The move was successful. Why? Why? Because this one man said, I can get friends, family, and neighbors to come and be a part of an old-fashioned barn movie. And I'm not sure if there'd ever been one in that area of the world before or not. But it was old-fashioned, wasn't it? Because those folks went to work with their hands. How important is that? There's more to the story, though. From that incident that occurred, a book was written. And it was written for children. And it was entitled, Farmer Herman and the Flooding Barn. And the byline underneath the title, I don't know if you can see it, maybe I can blow it up without making you seasick. A story about 344 people working together to solve a big, big, big problem. And here's something I want you to see. Hopefully it'll get there about as big as I can get it. Yeah, maybe you can. In black here, you'll read these words, written by Jason Weber, illustrated, look at this, illustrated by 344 people, and then it gives the name of an actual illustrator. But what's he saying? When those 344 people came together, it was a reflection of what started in the minds of one man who was willing to take a step to invite his friends, his family, and neighbors to come and be part of the barn movie. What an amazing story. In the back, there's flyers that uh, you can pick up. You can post on a board. There's also uh, invitations that are, you can fold over. We've got some folded over to show you how it's done, but you can take, put this in the mail, just carry it to your neighbor, keep, throw some in your, in your lunch box if you want to take them to work. It doesn't matter. As long as we get out like Herman and say to friends, family, and neighbors, we want you to worship with us May 1st. And why do we want to do it? What motivates it? Because we know God loves the lost. And they're our neighbors, and he wants us to love our neighbors. And he wants us to put our all in going all out to preach the gospel. In the past, when we've had one of these events, we end up with visitors here that we're able to follow up on, make contacts with, and then the community. We have spectators who are going to see what we are doing. But it's all going to be because we, together, share in the duties of reaching out to our friends, our family, and neighbors. Back there, there is also, just real quick, this sheet, once again, where you can just, as you think about people, you can invite, list them on here, start praying for them, and, and, and then we, there's a progress of, of, of action, how you can invite those people that are on your list that you're praying about to our friends and family day. And we're going to have a wonderful day. We're going to have some fine singing, some good preaching, and some excellent cooking. And why not?
put her hands together to move the barn. When we do, we can be successful. And here's why we need to do. One of the things pointed out in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5, is that life doesn't go on forever, does it? For the living know that they will die. Unfortunately, we live with that knowledge. And it's interesting that in five verses later, we read the words, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And look at this, for there is no work or device of knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. In other words, once you die, all of those things you wish you would have done, too bad. If I die and my garage looks like it does now, it's going to look that way when I'm dead. And my kids can worry about it. But when it comes to the lost, we have time now. And if the Lord allows us to go on in the days ahead, we can put our hands together to have a good old-fashioned barn moving as we go all out to reach those that are outside of Christ. Because what we want is for folks to do simply this. Become children of God. Become Christians. Folks to learn that if they hear the gospel and believe that Jesus is the Christ, they can repent of their sins and make a change in their life. And by confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, be baptized for remission of sins. And then they're on that walk of salvation where as long as they remain faithful, they've got heaven in their, their sights. They're going to stand on a hill far greater than that barn rests upon today. They're going to be with God. And what greater place can you be located? And so this morning, if you're here and you're not yet looking for that location, then maybe it's time to get moving. Maybe move your own barn and obey the gospel. If we can help you this morning, we beg you to come as we stand and sing. If there's other needs you have, please let us know as we stand and sing this song of invitation. Closing song today would be number 853. That would be the first and last verses of the song. <clears throat> Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace.
very quickly. We decided to change the order a little bit today because you know when we had the the two announcements together, it got kind of got repetitive and burdensome. So we decided we're going to have the elder thing at the end to kind of remind you of what we need you to do. First of all, I'd like to re remember the sick that's on there, and I didn't. Know, I'm looking down through here and seeing. Well, I was going to have surgery on Thursday. Wow. And then Bobby's going to have surgery on Tuesday. Wow. And I saw another one. Pat Cruz is going to have surgery on Thursday. What's that? See the doctor about possible surgery. Okay. Whew. I said, boy, Thursday is going to be a stitching day. But we're... I hope everything turns out all right for those of you that are going to be having surgery. And we know that thing, with the Lord as your surgeon, everything's going to turn out fine, won't it? We're glad that we had the opportunity. Look at your bulletin. There's a long list. But there's one I hadn't seen on there before, and that was Vic Williams. Vic Williams preaches at the Smith Chapel Congregation over in eastern Ozark County, down by West Plains. He's been fighting cancer for a long time, but I don't think throat cancer is one of them. But remember Vic Williams as you pray. He's been preaching for a long time, superintendent of the school district down there. So he needs our prayer. So if you would please remind, remind, be reminded of Vic Williams. All the things that's in the bulletin, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to serve, don't we? All out. All out. Thank you, Rick, for a powerful message. Good, please, let's bow together for our closing prayer and for all those who are in need and our help. Thank you, Father, for your love, for your mercy. Thank you, Father, that we can come before you on behalf of others for our brother Marvin and sister Wanda and, and Pat and Susie. And down the list we go with, with Haley not doing well, but he's continuing to heal. And Lila and Joanne and, and, and Jerry Letterman's going to have some surgery. And Bobby and Missy and John Nash, and those others that we mentioned, Father, we, we know that, that you're there hearing our hearts and hearing our prayers. We're thankful that we can come together at this time to remember them. We pray also for our work here, to reaching the lost, for their sickness is even more dangerous than our physical sickness. Pray for something to be said or done to them to help them, Father, as we take the, the gospel to them that they'll desire to have the great physician work on their heart. Be with us now. Be with us as we return this evening. Help us, Father, to always do your, your will in all that we say and all that we do. We're so thankful that we have the opportunity to be together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.